Hello and welcome. It is Friday night, live, improv from New York City, although it's from all over the world, ladies and gentlemen. We have people and improvisers, they're, not, they're mutually exclusive. We have improvisers from such faraway locations as Canada, I know, Arizona. Uh, so we're the first thing we're going to do for you is we are going to play a conducted story. Uh, we're all going to work together to tell the same story, but all in different genres. I think you probably want to know what those genres are. So why don't we review them? Jane, what are you doing? I'm doing film noir, see? <laughs> yes, you are. Mark, what are you up to? I'm doing a little romance. Yes, you are, but what are you going to improvise? <laughs> Wendy, what are you doing? Oh, I'm working on my cooking manual. Oh, hello, Lydia. Yes, darling. <laughs> I think you just went through puberty just then. Your voice cracked. Victoria, what are you doing? Cartoon! <laughs> wow. Uh, cartoon. Elky, how about you? What are you doing? Horror! 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 <laughs> Love it. Benita, what are you doing? I am doing Shakespeare. Classing up the joint. About time somebody did. How about you, Chris? What are you up to? I'm doing a children's story. Oh, good. Then I will understand it. How perfect. As for I you. Oh, thank you. You're special, too. <laughs> and last but not least, Margaret, what are you doing? I'm doing a nature documentary. Yes, you are. Very That's serious. Very serious. Oh, I know. Well, we're running out of nature right now. And interestingly <laughs> enough for you, Margaret, the story that we are all telling today is called The Deer in the Forest. We take you now to the deer in the forest. Let's start with you, Chris. One bright and sunny day, there was a deer. There was more than one deer. There was one, two, three, four, five deer. But our deer was named Clarence. Please, over to you, Benita. And Clarence was a beautiful deer with beautiful big doe eyes. And he was looking for his mother. And so he would call out into the forest and say, Oh, mother, what thou for out thou? Well, do I see you? Could you please come with me and let us lay it down in the river, in the pool of uh, lime light? And maybe after that, go for a tuna fish sandwich. Please, over to you, Victoria. So they had the tuna fish sandwich, and it was awesome! And they decided to swim like the tuna fish, too. So they ran up to the pond, and they in, And they were in the tuna fish pond, and there were tuna fish all the way. And they wanted to fish with the tuna fish, so they grabbed a big tuna fish pole, and they woo! Freeze, Mark. Clarence had that pole in his hands, casted it into the deep, deep tuna fish pool, and he was going to catch himself a big old filet for dinner for him and his mama. Please, Elky! But what came of his mother, he thought. She was over by the river. She was by the river, in the limelight. But what happened after the tuna fish sandwich? <sighs> what came over Clarence's mind was mind-boggling because he realized his mother's been dead for three years. Three, three long years. Freeze. <laughs> over to you, Jane. And Clarence, you see, he was determined to find the killer of his mother. Because these sorts of things, they come around, they go around, 
It's up, it's down. It can be downright nasty. So, he went along the long, dark forest trail, and that's where he saw her. Yeah, she was the killer, but she was also a looker. Please, over to you, Margaret. Well, we might uh, want to investigate why there seems to be such a shortage of tuna and an abundance of deer. Is there a connection between the tuna and the deer? And it is assumed that the deer may actually be secretly feasting on the tuna. It is very mysterious because deer have not been known to be, be fishermen, fishing deer. But Please, Wendy. Indeed, when Clarence found the fishing deer and the woman who he believed had killed his mother, she revealed that it was incorrectly boiled tuna and incorrectly prepared venison for the ultimate meal of life in the forest. And if she had just, she, she told him if he had just taken precautions and followed the recipe, they wouldn't have this death on their hands because they wouldn't have had the poisons in the tunas and the, de in the venison of the forest. Please, Victoria. And so everyone was poisoned and it was crazy. So they all got together and they all jumped in the lake and they decided to have a big, huge party with all of the deer and all of the tuna fish and all of the fun. So they had so much fun in the Tuna fish pool! And everyone Please. was there. Benita! But as Clarence lay swimming in the pool, he couldn't get the death of his mother off of his mind. So he questioned the woman with the venison and the tuna fish. He said to her, I am going to give it my revenge for the death of my mother. Her blood is on your hands, mysterious woman. Now, <laughs> Margaret. Well, it, it has been noted that a mysterious woman, woman has been seen spotted by the lake where the tuna swim. So it is possible that that mysterious woman was the act one actually stealing the tuna and not the deer. However, this has not yet been proved, so it is still an open question. Please, <laughs> Mark. The question that was on Clarence's mind was, how did that doe, Beverly, look so good? Love was in the air. He saddled right up next to her, nudged her on her shoulder with his big, massive antlers, said, hey, girl, you want some tuna? Please, Wendy. And she said, I would love some tuna. I've been dying for someone to tell me, say, ask me if I would like some tuna. And I would say, could I just have a bit of wasabi on the side with my tuna? Because I really love the way that wasabi and tuna go. And um, he said, lovely, I would love to give you some wasabi. Let me go to the, the supermarket. The shop right is just down the way. And I Please. will give you some... Elkie. But then Clarence realized that he wasn't going anywhere. He was started to feel a little woozy, as if something was in the meal he was eating. It was making him feel like he couldn't move, like he was paralyzed. Suddenly Beverly was looking at him and laughing. She was laughing a little too hard, but laughing nonetheless. And she said, I killed your mother. Please. Jane! And now I've killed you, you big galoot. You had it coming to you. Well, then Clarence, Clarence reached in his side, into his side pocket and he pulled out his 45 and he said, listen kid, I love you, but you're bad news. You're bad news and so you gotta go. And so he cocked his gun. Please. Chris. And Clarence said, 
bang, bang. And Beverly said, you missed me. And they ran around and frolicked in the forest. And there's our game. Well done. Give yourselves a round of applause. Hey, it is Friday night. It's live. It's improv. It's New York City. And we're going to be back with more improv for you throughout the evening. So you hang around. Thanks for being with us. Ha, 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 ha.